Hello and welcome to this success lesson on test taking skills brought to you by the Hartford Community College Learning Center. So what are some of your biggest fears? Are you scared of spiders, maybe heights, maybe clowns? For some students, test taking ranks among their biggest fears and uh, it can be a big source of stress and anxiety and it really makes you wonder why do we even need to take tests? Well, tests are simply a reflection. They're meant to show your professors, reflect uh, what you've learned this semester and your progress so far. But I really want to emphasize that a test isn't an end-all be-all measure of your intelligence or your potential as a student. Test taking really is a skill and it's something, it's a skill that anyone can improve on just like anyone can improve in a sport or hobby, you can improve in test taking. So we're going to talk about some strategies today that will help you um, with test taking. So the first strategy is know the format of the test. Just like you wouldn't want to show up for a sport and say, OK, what equipment do I need? No, you want to come prepared to tennis with a tennis ball and with a tennis racket. Likewise, before you take a test, really try to familiarize yourself with what's going to be on the test, the format of the test. Maybe your instructor will let you know about how many questions will be on the test or um, what format it will be. So multiple choice tests are more like recognition. You just have to recognize the right answer when you see it. Whereas writing essays on tests is more like rehearsal, making that information your own, putting it in your own words. So try to anticipate the types of questions that will be on a test and even see if you can take a practice test. Maybe one you find online or your instructor gives you or best yet, create your own practice test. Um, and that's a great study tool to help you prepare. So oftentimes instructors will give students a study guide, especially for finals and things like that. But even if your instructor doesn't give you a study guide, always try to create your own study plan. And this can help you focus on concepts that your professor says are important, concepts that you do not understand as well, and concepts that make up a large portion of the test. So as you can see, this student made a study plan of uh, reviewing the homework and quizzes, but you can also make a study plan based on a study guide that your instructor gives you. So if we see this uh, study guide for functions, statistics, and trigonometry, maybe some things to highlight, uh, the instructor says that you can use a note card. Awesome, so you'll want to come prepared to the test with a note card of equations or examples or other things that would be helpful for you. We also see that the exam is is 50 questions long, so that gives us a good idea of what to expect for the exam. Uh, chapter two has more questions than any other chapter on the exam, so that would be a great chapter to make sure to review. And then also you could highlight perhaps a section or a concept that you didn't understand as well, because you'll really want to focus on that to make sure it doesn't stump you on the test. Now, before taking tests, either in person or taking a test online, be sure to prepare yourself physically. I know some of these may sound silly, but it's so important to get a good night's sleep before, to make sure that you're nourished and you've eaten a good meal. And there are definitely um, resources at HCC and in the community to help out with that, such as the HCC food pantry if you need. Be sure to arrive early. You don't want to be rushing as you're starting the test and um, make sure you're comfortable. Have all your materials such as your pencil, your scratch paper if allowed, and uh, you can dress in layers so you're not too hot or too cold. Before taking a test, visualize success. Um, you can create a positive affirmation such as I'm fully prepared. I am test smart. Don't worry about what others around you are doing. Maybe someone finishes way earlier than you. Don't worry about it and make sure to take a deep breath before you take the test. We'll talk more about that a little later. 
while taking tests, make sure to preview the test, see about how long it is, read the directions really carefully, and highlight the instructions and key phrases. So on this test question, I might want to highlight this instruction to choose the word or pair of words that best completes the sentences, uh, sentence as a whole. OK, I know that's what I need to focus on there. You can also, if you're allowed to, write on the test or write on your scratch piece of paper some memory cues that will help you. Maybe there's an equation you want to jot down that you know will be helpful for a problem. And you can learn from the test. Maybe you forgot the name of a term. Oh, what was that? But it comes up later in the test and um, that can help you sort of refresh your memory. All right, let's talk about str strategies specific to the four types of test questions that you might run into. True, false, multiple choice, short answer, and essay. So don't worry about incorporating all of these strategies at once, but maybe choose one or two that you would like to implement next time you take a test. So for true false questions, if any part of a statement is false in a true or false question, then the whole answer is false. So be on the lookout for those things that you know aren't right. Um, another tip, if a question contains an unconditional word, so all, every, always, that answer is probably false. Now, when answering multiple choice questions, note in the test directions if you can only choose one or if you can choose multiple. Make sure to read all of your answers before making a choice, and you can cross out answers that are obviously incorrect. I think that's really helpful. And then look for answers that are opposites, because if two questions are exact opposites, maybe one is right and one is wrong. And likewise, look for questions that answers that are really similar because maybe one of them is more correct than the other and maybe one of them is a more thorough answer than the other and if you know two or more of the questions are correct or that sorry the answers are correct in an all of the above situ situation then you can choose all of the above as the correct answer short answer this is different than fill in the blank. Short answer are sometimes like little mini paragraphs you have to write. So the best approach here is to state the main idea and then offer supporting details to show your instructor that you, you understand. Now, essay questions. Essay questions require an in-depth discussion of the topic. So read the instructions carefully, underline key terms in the writing prompt, and then take some time to brainstorm. Um, you can outline, draw a mind map. Don't start writing immediately, but organize your thoughts first. Some other strategies, you can revise the question to use as the first sentence of your essay. So for example, if the question asks, um, what are the main contributing factors to the American Revolution? You could start your essay with, the main contributing factors to the start of the American Revolution were da 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 da. We talked about organizing your ideas. You can develop each of the main ideas into separate paragraphs and then provide supporting details. Then you can write a satisfying conclusion, summarizing the points you've made, and save some time at the end if you have time to revise, proofread, and look for places to add more supporting details. Do you ever find that you run out of time while you're taking a test? Lots of students have this issue. No worries, this is a skill that you can master. Bring a watch and pace yourself. If there are 60 questions on the test and you have 60 minutes to take it, well, try to spend about a minute on each answer and answer the easy questions first. You can skip or circle the ones that you're not sure about and come back to them. And this is kind of a silly tip, but if you're taking a Scantron test, using a dull pencil can help you fill out those bubbles a little bit faster. OK, are you often confused by test instructions? If this is you, I would really suggest looking at a worksheet such as the one we have here on screen to um, see definitions of test instructions. 
If a test asks me to identify, what does that mean? Or justify, what does that mean? And if you want to explore this more in depth, you can always make an appointment to come into the Learning Center or use the Learning Center's online resources to work with a learning assistant and really discuss some of these um, test instructions. If you feel anxious during a test, you can always flip your test over and take a minute to breathe. Be mindful of how you are sitting and how you are feeling and take a couple of deep breaths. You will be surprised how much this really can calm you down and keep you focused. So um, one breathing technique, you can inhale deeply through your nostrils for three seconds. Hold your breath for two seconds and then exhale through your mouth. You can also talk back to your test anxiety. Sometimes we get so in our thoughts and get really bogged down and it can be helpful just to reason a little bit with ourselves. So just to calm yourself down in your mind, you can say things such as, let's see, what does this say? What's the main point? I made some notes on that. Uh, take a couple of deep breaths. I don't remember that, but I'll come back to it later. Slow down. These little phrases you can tell yourself um, can really help calm you down during the test. Other test taking tips, if you get stuck, move on. You can review your answers at the end and really make sure you've given an answer to each question and proofread. Now, after taking the test, make sure you reward yourself. Sometimes after really difficult tests, you just need to celebrate that you did it. You did your best. I know at my university, we had a creamery and after taking a really hard test I love to go get an ice cream or go get a chocolate milk and maybe for you it's watching your favorite show. Um, reward yourself for the efforts that you've made. After the test don't think that's the end. Make sure when you get your test back or you get your score back study your instructor's feedback and know why you missed the questions that you did and um, make sure you can correct them so you can know what to do better in the future because those same concepts might come up in a future class or on a future exam. And you can always reach out to get help from your instructor or from the Learning Center. We are definitely here for you at the Learning Center to talk about studying strategies, test taking strategies, and also to work with you on uh, the content for your courses. So thank you so much for watching this presentation and good luck on your tests this semester.